Hey, we're back. Mr. Matt Mirage. Large, hey, how's it going, guys? Large format Matt. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yes. Something new, and I'm excited because it's large format mm-hmm. in all different 4x5, 5x7, 8x10. Yes. What? So uh, what I've got here in the studio is the new Gen or Gen 3 Intrepid 8x10 folding, you know, wooden folding field camera. But Intrepid has just released their, their latest gen of cameras, which includes 4x5, 5x7, and 8x10. Within, I would say, the 4x5 line, the 4x5 is the best it's ever been. Uh, I believe in the 4x5 this is their gen 5 camera so they've, they've had several other iterations the nicest things uh, about these newer gen cameras they have at the 8x10 size they've shaved off they've shaved off even more weights on the, the 8x10 and the 5x7 the 4x5 is about the same size but they've added extra bells and whistles extra features uh, John's picking it up right now and noticing that it's, it's very very light it's one of the lightest 8x10s out there uh, their 8x10 is 2.6 kilos which is 6.2 pounds i believe so it's really really lightweight my camp my tachihara for example that one weighs 12 and 12 and change 13 pounds so half the weight of most field cameras hmm. um, there are some obvious like trim downs on this camera it's lightweight uh, plywood construction for like the the rear the focusing rack and the the front standard where the lens goes here in the front but they've they've added some bells and whistles to the camera. It's still lightweight. Um, I'm really surprised how the bellows feel. They, Hello. They've got like a kind of a rubbery feel to them. Yeah. Can you They're, say that again? I was just gonna say. Oh, uh, the bellows have like this really nice kind of rubbery feel to them. Um, they are you know light tight, infrared proof, well, all that. We manufacture these or? Uh, I think they. I think they I'm make sure. their own bellows. I'm not sure if they make their own in house or if they <clears> source them uh, locally in the UK. So the Intrepid Camera. If you've not heard of these guys, they're if you haven't heard of these folks, they're based out of the UK. They have been hand-making cameras probably since the mid-2010s. And uh, we were one of the first outlets to really cover Intrepid. And I feel kind of responsible. I hyped so many mm. people into the idea of the Intrepid 8x10 because I was just excited to see somebody going for it, making a, a lightweight, really inexpensive camera. And Intrepid comes up on a lot of people's lists because they are so, so inexpensive. The, the most inexpensive for a new large format camera. If you need new uh, and you want to maybe dip your toe into large format, uh, Intrepid is a, a really good option that's out there. But know that it is, it's going to have some trade-offs being a lightweight camera. So mm-hmm. let's start with the 4x5. The 4x5 is only a few pounds. And speaking of pounds, it costs hmm. two sixty six sixty seven in Great British pounds. Uh, so it's about 300 US dollars. One quick question, Matt. Yeah. For folks at home listening, mm-hmm. Matt's talking about a brand new large format camera. Yep. For folks who don't know, these are the cameras that take sheet film. Individual sheets for in, every shot. Yes. And you have a film holder that goes in the back. Holds in the dark. Yep. Two sheets per film holder. Mm-hmm. Sheets. Sheets. And you also ha- you have to furnish or put together your own lens. The thing with large format is it's everything's a la carte. Right. You're never going to buy it a kit from a manufacturer that comes with a lens that comes with this. Now there are used resellers that will do that. They'll package it together, but the rules are very different from uh, most other like camera kits. So uh, you have to be picky about the lenses. There's like conversion factors for the look of the lens that goes into it. So there's a lot of steps. This is kind of like, I really want to take my time and slow way the heck down from maybe like something more point and shoot Mm -hmm. or like a roll film camera or considered. Yeah, but you know, I always compare this to going to the high roller table. You know, we've <laughs> we've we've left the penny slots. Dollar tables are down the hall. We're we're at the we're at the five, ten, twenty dollar tables mm. now. Uh, with every individual shot costing a few bucks. And would you say there are a lot of folks who are looking to step into large format, starting with four by five? Yes, I, and four by five is actually where I recommend. Even though the eight by ten is what's here. Um, Intrepid sent me the 8x10 because they know I'm an 8x10 shooter, and it was, it was really cool of them to send me this to give my opinion. And, you know, I guess the other thing to mention, they didn't pay for me to talk, you know, say good things, bad things, whatever. Um, this is, uh, this was just... Completely hey, unsolicited. Yeah. Hey, try opinion. it out. Yeah. In fact, when they emailed me, they're just like, what's your address? Oh, okay. I thought they were going to send me like a sticker or something. Oh. <laughs> And then I get this giant package. Like, oh, God. And it's like the whole camera. And um, some of the biggest upgrades on these large format cameras, because this is their latest generation, they've shaved off weight on the 8x10. 
They've added some extra um, what are called detents on here. So when I start moving around um, the camera, there's these little little tracks that it jumps into. Mm -hmm. And that's how you know the camera's like straight up and down. On really old cameras or some really cheap cameras, it can be hard to tell if it's like level or if it's like... Sure. Um, you know where it is on the tripod so this can help you find that out it's got bubble levels on top the other nice thing about this camera it's lightweight it's inexpensive everything in large format costs a lot more generally so for large format this is the most inexpensive new camera that that you're going to find out there and the other big thing that many people are excited about this is the first of the intrepid cameras in 8x10 to come uh, to have an option for a fresnel so the fresnel is that magnifying lens mm -hmm that brightens the ground glass. So let's say you're shooting and the sun's coming in from like the side or somewhere else, or you're shooting in the studio, you don't need a dark cloth. Oh. oh. Only if the sun is hitting the glass will you need a cloth to, like a dark cloth that's to cover it up. That's so standard? <laughs> I thought it was. Um, when I received this camera, the, the, the Fresnel was already on here. So I did like a little overview video and I mentioned the Fresnel, but I didn't really get anything. I got like a small manual with the camera, but I didn't know that the Fresnel was an optional feature. It was already installed on there. So uh, I did kind of feel bad. A few folks bought the camera. Like the second I showed the camera, a few people bought it. And they're like, hey, where's the oh, Fresnel? Because so, you didn't know at first. I, I didn't know. And this is UK. UK pounds. Yeah. So you will buy UK pounds and then they will ship it to the States. Yep. And okay. you, I don't think we'll have to deal with like VAT or anything. But if you're in the EU, you're going to have to factor in VAT, the value added tax. Right. So it's great. I'm having fun with it. I took it on vacation with me. So, oh, the, okay. The last vacation was really weird, Mike. I didn't have my big cam. This is the lightest I've ever traveled. Yes. I had the Intrepid and one small backpack with the holders and like two mm -hmm. lenses, and then I brought the sixteen. As oh, everyone should. It's a it's a very weird combo. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it comes out. I had Lauren because Lauren was like, "Oh, can I play around with the the Airy?" So I like preset everything. I'm like. How about you record me shooting this so I can drop in some small 16 mm. mil clips in like a, a large format Friday. So hopefully that'll show up in, in like the final review of this this camera. But it's fun. If mm -hmm. I'm looking to get into a 4x5, yes. this is the cheapest new 4x5 camera you could buy. New to 4x5, the question I always have is like, oh, what do I do? I don't know what to do for a lens. Does the mm -hmm. website give you recommendations of what type of lens or how would you know as a newbie, what lens to use? So what is really cool about their site, and I, I've actually contributed some some like blogs to you know to their site. One thing that's really cool is uh, there's so you go on their site. There's the shop where you can of course buy all the things. That's always first. But then there's how tos for everything. Oh, mm -hmm. and there's a how to four by five, how to eight by ten, blog posts from photographers, myself included, some other folks we've had on the show and talked about before, and then frequently asked questions. And they also have uh, YouTube. Instagram, TikTok, all sorts of stuff to help folks get into uh, large format. So pretty good, uh, pretty good resource to start out in. And they they definitely are the only reason they're around is because their initial like Kickstarter was community funded. So they are uh, pretty community driven when it comes to that. Of course, anybody that's doing something that is going out of their way to do something different, you're going to have folks that, that hate on it a little bit too. Man, there are many folks, especially in large format, that they, they want the highest end thing, and you can't expect the highest end thing if it's also the most inexpensive. It's like the you know, the good, cheap, fast little toggle yes, sure. thing. Yeah, Good, fast, cheap. Yeah. Pick two. Like on the 4x5, if mm -hmm. you own a Wista, can that lens board just pop off a Wista and pop on here? Great question, Mike. So the 4x5 comes in the Linhoff Technic amount, which is what a Wista takes. Okay. So they are pretty universal. So the Intrepid, and again, I always recommend 4x5 because the lenses are cheaper, the film is cheaper, and there's just more stuff out right. there. All of their mounts are pretty universal. So with the 4x5, it's the Linhoff Technica style boards. In the, the 5x7 and the 8x10, it's the Cinar style boards and pretty pretty good but if folks want to learn more about like the the, the individual stuff that's on like the 8x10 i've got a few videos now i've got like a little short one minute deal i've got the like a, a initial thing where i took it out in the field and then i've got the full size review that's going to be coming out okay so. good is it common for cameras to have a bubble bubble on, levels uh, are bubble levels common on cameras um i think they should be but depending on the age of the camera not necessarily okay. so most cameras in starting in the late 70s and onward, they'll have some option for the bubble levels. I think studio cameras like Cinar started it, 
and then most modern field cameras will have them. So it's a nice thing to, to have. You don't want to leave this in the sun all day because those bubble levels will dry out. Oh, but, as uh, well as the wood. Where do you put yeah. the film in here? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Just spring back right here. just peels oh. the film holder inserts. Now, you're, yeah. I saw you playing with the magnets here. Yeah. Or not magnets. These are little clips. But then if I push this up to Will go that... Lock s- it? Well, there's magnets that hold the whole thing on. Oh. So, ooh. It's not on a tripod, so it's giving me a... There it is. So it's got all these magnets on it, and I can rotate the back to do a horizontal. Oh, it snaps. That is amazing. This is the first one that does that. The old one was held on by, like, these clips and bands, and it wasn't too strong. So that's locked, and this is unlocked. This, this is, so this that's is locked, locked, and right. then this is unlocked, and it completes it. Yeah. How easy does it fold up? Oh, my gosh. That's probably the nicest part. Here, let me move my computer. Camera folds up very, very smooth. I think the biggest thing, I, I mentioned this is this is good and cheap, but I, I omitted fast. Because oh, this okay. camera isn't, I mean, large format in general is not very fast. Yeah, right? But because some of these knobs are really compact and 3D printed, some things oh. take a little bit longer. And I think focusing takes a little bit longer on this camera. Because focusing is driven entirely from this one screw in the back. Oh. Hmm. And it's very precise. But if you need to do a lot of focus, it takes it takes a minute. It's like anything else. It's like well, once you get used to folding it up and you know yeah. come and go, you'll be fine. Yeah, you will. This thing sets up in literally thirty seconds. Okay. Yeah, and then to focus, it's a little bit more. I've mentioned this a few. Times, it's a little bit more fiddly, but it it does a really good job, and I can't complain, especially with the price. Are you going to have a video on this? Camera? I've already got two videos, and I've got the big review coming. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm listening. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you have examples of images you shot? Oh, yes. I've got some of those, and I also have some uh, like full-res ones on okay. my Flickr. And Would you call this a starter camera? Perfect starter camera. Oh, yeah. And the 4x5, uh, I keep mentioning the 4x5 because I think their design of the 4x5 is, is very well optimized. That's like their best camera is the 4x5. But this 8x10 is now at a point where I can act- I can actually like recommend the 8x10. The mm. first one, I, I like hyped it up without having seen it and then when it came out it was kind of like it had some issues and they knew it had some issues and that's they quickly came out with a gen 2 and then this is the gen 3 okay so they're they're making upgrades and are is it perfect no it's but it's a 500 dollars 8 by 10 yep most of the lenses that go on these cameras cost more than that now so i think for what it is it's very very nice um i think for folks that are doing specific things like hiking and backpacking this is awesome um, I feel like I need to start adding weight or I'm going to start adding weight here because mm-hmm. uh, I'm not hiking as much. Right. I, I'm not huffing it to, right. to get all my extra gear out there. So it's I can go further, longer days, and I can shoot a little bit more casually with it. So uh, when I first met you, Matt, you had an 8x10, the Eastman B in yes. your backpack. Mm-hmm. It was hefty. So to carry this around is nothing. Nothing. And, you know, that Eastman, you mentioned it, I missed that camera. That was that was actually really light for what it was, but it was still a big... Beast. It was a beast. Yeah. So this camera is a lot more compact, a lot lighter, and but it's, you know, it probably also can't handle the same kind of abuse right. some of the other cameras do. Yes, you can't drop it. Ex- exactly. So because this is, uh, it's ply with, I think it's got like a small lacquer finish on it. The one thing I also want to do is give this the test of, a little bit more of a test of time. So I, I don't review something right away mm. because yeah. I don't know, give me a chance to break it. Give you know? the intro <laughs> review. Yes. So I did like a little overview thing and the full review is still, I'm still assembling that. And I tried to shoot it in a bunch of places. So I took it to the studio. I hung out with Tariq a few times. I hung out with Steven and shot with him. Um, I took it on vacation. I've taken it down to the Hocking Hills. So like I do my, my normal thing, but I've also taken it on a few extra shoots. Um, I still have some testing to do with the, they say it works with infrared film, which when you're working with large format, that's not a given. Some of the bellows on these um, infrared light bellows. can bellows. Get, in get in and like oh, fog right. your picture. Wow. Intrepid says this works with infrared, but I'm going to test it just to make sure. I, have, I don't have color, but I have black and white. I'm, I'm hopeful with, with everything on here. All the shots. I haven't had anything that like no pictures were ruined because of the camera. Right. <laughs> pictures have definitely been ruined because of me, but like the camera's been you know, great. I got to say, it's good to hear. Yeah. To know that even Matt Mirage can I can still very, up I can pictures. easily. And if you're buying this camera and you're on a budget, you could buy some uh, FPP Mummy 8x10 sheets. Mm. Perfect combination. The Mummy.
Then all you need is a lens yep. and a holder and a few other accessories, and you're off to the races. Yep. This way yeah. you can just burn through film and not feel like, you know, you... I mean, the color is expensive. It's very... I mean, yeah. a box of Portra, Mike? Yeah. Well, you know. It's, yeah. it's up... Over you're the, 200. You're the cheapest, Oof. and it's still over 200. Yeah. yeah. 10 sheets. Holy smokes. Yeah. You know, we're at the point now... Do you know what the cheapest color 8x10 film is? Nope. Polaroid. Oh. Do you need a special back in order to get Polaroid on this camera? Special everything. You need a oh. special film holder. Okay. You need a processor. Okay. And that is laborious. But good news. There's a video that Leslie and I filmed forever ago. Yes. 11 years ago now. Oh that's on the YouTube, and it takes you all the way through it. Okay. That's how well, long I've been doing this crap, Mike. Yeah. So <laughs> Intrepid, Generation 3, 4x5, 5x7, 8x10, they make bigger? Not yet. Okay. I, I don't think they... Uh, the other thing, too, with a camera with this type of construction, as it gets bigger, you can get issues because it's so light and so big. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know anybody, like, personally at Intrepid, so I don't know that it's in the cards, but... Right. Would it be cool? Sure, but there's also like a lot of options as you go, you go right. that size.